Hello, this is Morgan from the Vault of Kundark, and in this video we're going to show you how to take any object from in-game Dungeons and Dragons Online and have it 3D printed. So whether that's uh, on your own 3D printer or having it uploaded to a website that you can order it, uh, we're going to show you how to do that. Uh, so one of the things we have to start with is you have to download some stuff. So if you haven't downloaded all the things that are going to be in the description, I would direct you to go ahead and do that now. There's quite a bit to download that you'll need. Uh, but after you've got that download, uh, we should be ready to go. So we're actually going to start with the Vault of Kundarak launcher. Now, in order to be able to hook into the game, you have to have something that can scrape the DirectX out of it. So you have to be running in DirectX 10 or 11. DirectX 9 will not work for this. Um, but you have to be able to launch the game from a command line. Now, normally you can't do that with our launcher. I added the ability to do that. So as soon as this launcher update goes out, I'll be publishing this video. But you'll notice this little button here at the end. That's a, the tooltip for it is get command line arguments. I don't think that's going to show up in the stream, but you click this. You get a little pop-up that you can't see that says you, this has been you know, copied to your clipboard. So I'll click OK. Then we're going to open RenderDoc. Uh, RenderDoc is the application that we're going to use in order to do this. Now, in RenderDoc, you're going to want to set the client executable path to wherever you have DDO installed. So this is where it is for me. This working directory will automatically get populated. And you want to take the stuff that our launcher put on your clipboard and you paste it in right here. Now, it's worth noting, I have this blacked out because this contains sensitive information. This in, in, uh, contains your subscription key, which is what I uniquely identifies your account. And it contains a login ticket, which is the authenticated ticket that someone could use to log in. So don't share this with people. Don't let other people have it. Um, but the th reason we have to do it this way is because these tickets are single use. You log in with the ticket once, you can't log in with it again. But after you get that populated, you should be able to just hit launch. And then DDO will start up. We'll go ahead and turn off render doc as DDO loads. You'll know this is working properly if you see this stuff in the top left corner. Um, the D3, D11 print screen to capture that sort of stuff. You'll know that that means that things are working. Uh, so I have a blade forge that I created and I just dumped them. Yeah, you know, I just clicked all the presets, nothing fancy, because I want to go through and pull up the Lord of Blades. I want to show you how to do this to print to the Lord of Blades. Again, I've got my character name blacked out just for security purposes. And there he is, the Lord of Blades. So I'm going to go ahead and push F12 because that's the key to capture. And that's going to, over here in render doc, uh, if we turn on render doc real quick. We will actually see that we have this one little capture created down here. So at this point, you can go ahead and close, it, close the game. We're done with the game, so I'm going to close it real quick. And we're going to play with render doc for a while. So inside of render doc, uh, you'll notice that you've got this stuff over here, the, which is the event browser. This basically represents one single um, DirectX painting. And that's fine. But what we want to do is go through and find where this was, where the Lord of Blades was added. So as you just click down through here, you're going to see that this is drawing individual objects in the world, walls and pillars and whatever else the case is. And you just have to hit the down arrow a bunch of times until you find the frame that adds the Lord of Blades or adds whatever object you want to capture, whether that's yourself or something else. So you could even, you know, 3D print the core from behind there. So now we see that there's at least two frames, three frames here where the Lord of Blades is drawn. So we have the, the first frame draws his head, the next frame draws his body, the last frame draws all the stuff on him. 
And you see the same thing that's kind of true for your character, right? And you get the, the body, the head, the extra stuff, and then the hair. And then what looks to be the face blades or who knows what else is getting added. But we're going to come back up here and we're going to grab these three. So once we're in here, we can go to the mesh viewer and we can see the physics that we're drawing. So this is the head. Come over here to mesh viewer and this sees that we are drawing a head. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit save. And you can't see it, uh, but you want to save this into a folder. So I want to save this into my desktop. And we're just going to call this new folder. Lord of Blades. All right, now I'm going to, this is a CSV file, which is what render.doc exports it as. I'm going to just call this the head. I'm going to go back to the texture viewer, click the next one. This is the body. All right, we can see that this is, does in fact look like the body. So I'll hit save, I'll call this the body. Go to the, back to here. Call this all the accessories. So I'll click save again, accessories. All right, and the next one is us. So we really only need those three. So once we've got those three saved, we're actually done with render doc. So we're going to close render doc because we're done with it. I don't want to save this capture. And now we're going to open Blender. Blender is also something that was in the, um, uh, the list of things to download. So in Blender, uh, we need to install a uh, import module that will allow us to take the data out of render doc and load it into Blender. And that's a module that I had found online that didn't work and then was able to update it and make it work. That should be linked below. We're going to go grab it right here. It says more can import render doc. We're going to install it. And you click the checkbox to enable it. And that's all there is to it. Close this guy. Now we're going to go import the various models that we had exported from render doc. So now there will be a render doc CSV here in the import list. We are going to come grab our stuff that we exported. We're going to start with the body. Do the same thing for the head. And do the same thing for the accessories. And that looks like the loader blades that we know. Uh, so this is still three separate things. You'll notice over here this is treating it like three separate objects. We want to make it treat it like one object. So we highlight everything. And maybe highlight everything again. I'm, hit, I'm trying to hit Control J. That's what allows us to do that. I don't know why. I haven't figured out the magic as to group these things together. All right, I slip them over here and then I hit Control J. Okay, after you do that, uh, we select it and we're going to send this to the origin so that it's at the beginning. That looks about right. Now, what's interesting to note is that for whatever reason, our scales aren't quite right with this. So on the right, you'll click your guy, click this little um, object properties thing here that gives you this transform menu. Our transform, I'm going to set the Z scale to 1.5. And then he looks right. It's just the way it is. Now, if we select this, we can put it on the scale. Now, most of the time when you import things in STL, they're imported in millimeters. So right now this guy is about 12 millimeters from toes to tip of the blade, so about a half an inch. I'm wanting to be five times that big at least. So it'd be two and a half inches. So I'm going to set the scale to be 5, 5, and 7.5. Now this is a 2.5 inch model. But he's still floating far below the surface. So we're going to bump this up to like 35. And that's going to put him up in the air. Now whenever you're talking about 3D printing something, you also want to print it on top of a base. So I went to Thingiverse and downloaded some miniature bases. And so I'm going to import that STL file. And I just found this base hex medium. I found that that works well. I'm going to use a round one too, if you'd rather. 
And so you'll notice that that's way over here. Not helpful. But we need to rotate that guy. So uh, over here in some one of these things. Transform, yep. I'm gonna transform this 90 degrees. And that puts it on the ground like we would hope. Now we gotta put it under him. So we're gonna send X to what, minus 11-ish. So it's half centered. I'm gonna send the Y to 11. And it puts it centered the rest of the way, which is good. Problem now our feet are in the air. We gotta make his feet touch. So select this again. I think I was fiddling with this earlier, and I think 33 was a good value. Feet touching, so it'll be stable. Without actually getting through and modifying stuff, which I really don't want to do. Maybe 32.9. You're kind of losing his toes into the model at that point. But So again, we want to collapse these with control J to be one thing. Yep, so we're now we're down to one thing. And now we can export this. Export this as an STL file. Overwrite that. Then we'll come over here and we are going to attempt to reload this. But I'll read it a little later. But this is what it looks like inside of Shapeways, which is a website you can just upload your STL file. I already uploaded it. This is what it'll look like which is pretty cool. This is before I added the base to it. But uh, as you can tell, like a, a plain plastic print of this would be $5 that you can paint. Uh, for people who are into minis, these things mean more than to you than they do to me, but um, still pretty cool all the same. So that's going to be it for now. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me in Discord. I'm available in the main DDO, plus uh, the Fault Token Dark has our own Discord. Uh, people can redirect you to that if you need to. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope this works out for you.